welcome to yet another core from scratch video i am so so proud of you for showing up consistently you are motivating me and we are going to do a lot of questions so we are practicing medium level questions for now these are the sort of questions that are expected to be done like two questions in 45 minutes and these are actually very very important questions and slowly we'll be moving ahead to hard level questions hard level questions are expected like you know one question in 45 minutes and we'll be going to that pretty soon in like another two three days so these should be like very thorough you should be thorough with concept now you should be able to write code without any mistakes handling all the edge cases properly so i want you to practice with me and also write code yourself using the links that i add in the description and ask me all the doubts that you have i want to clear all your doubts properly before we move ahead to hard level questions so what is the question today so we are going to look at one question and again see you know how this question is tweaked a bit and it becomes a hard level question or what can be the follow ups of this question okay so the question is that you have to find a bitonic point now what is a bitonic point so this is an example of a bitonic array what basically happens is that the numbers are in increasing order till any one particular point till here that point is 45 so your 45 is the peak element don't worry if it's not clear we will take examples we will make diagrams and we will understand properly and from 45 the elements keep decreasing again so the elements are sorted before and after is just that there is one peak in between okay similarly over here also see the elements are increasing till 47 till 50 it is increasing and from 50 it starts decreasing again so this 50 and this 45 over here are the bitonic points and that is what we have to find in this particular question see if the array is increasing then print the last element that will be the maximum value so let's take examples and let's see what we have to return see you will be given an array such that the elements are increasing first and then they are decreasing now it is possible that you know this peak is not there actually like maybe the first half is not there the second half is not there in that case your elements can look like this or can look like this basically continuously decreasing or continuously increasing if this is the case then this is your bitonic point or this is your bitonic point otherwise if that's not present then you know this is your bitonic point okay so this is what we have to return now let me also tell you about you know what can be the tweak that can be done to make this problem as a hard problem so right now you have to search for your bitonic point right otherwise another variation of the question is that search for a particular element in the pythonic array so this is a pythonic array where the elements increase and then decrease and then you can be given an element k and you can be asked to find it so how will you do that pause and think for a second see if this is a pythonic array and you know how to find this pythonic point which we are going to discuss today so if you know this and then you have to look for an element k what is it that you already know you know that this part is sorted and you know that this part is sorted right so this is decreasing part this is increasing part you can apply binary search over here you can apply binary search over here right so what you have to do is once you find the bitonic point you can do binary search over here and you can do binary search over here for the element k so you will say that we are actually not dividing this into half and we are doing binary search two times yes that is right see say the pythonic point was say 10 and here the elements were like say 1 2 3 4 5 and here also elements were say uh 9 8 7 6 5 like this the elements were there now suppose you are looking for an element 5 now this 5 can exist over here and over here right it can exist on both the halves if if the elements are not distinct see even if they are distinct say if there are 9 8 7 6 say there is another element 0 over here right now your zero could exist on the left side or on the right side you can't be sure that the element will exist on left side only or on right side only it can exist on any of the two points that is why we have to apply binary search but within this you can definitely apply binary search you can keep dividing into half then half then half again right similarly on this side also you can do binary search properly so you are actually going to do binary search two times if you are asked to find an element in a pythonic array Okay, to revise, what did we discuss till now? 
in the present question, we are given an array and we are given that we have a pythonic array and we have to find this pythonic point, right? Now I'm telling you that there can be small tweak that can be made this question to make it a hard question. What is that? You can be given an element K and you have to find an element K in this pythonic array. How can you do that? The sub problem will be to find the bitonic point, the question that we are dealing with right now. And after that, we will apply binary search on the left side and on the right side and search that, okay, do we have the element K or not? And this is why I wanted to understand the concepts properly, because even if we are doing a question, they can be like follow-up questions to this. Now, finding uh, the bitonic point seems like a medium level question, which can be asked in an interview. Say you do the question very quickly, then this can be a follow-up question. Find an element K in the bitonic. Coming back to the question in hand, how are we going to find the pythonic point? That is the entire question that we are dealing with in this video, right? So what are we going to do? This is how the pythonic array looks. Now let's say we are at this particular element. When we are at this element, we know that the previous element to this is smaller and the next element to it is bigger. So we know that I'm on the increasing side right now, right? So I know that my pythonic point will be on the right side. Similarly, say I come to this particular element. Now I see that the previous element is more and the next element is less. So now I'm sure that, okay, my answer that is the bitonic point will be on the left side. So this is how we can keep dividing our problem into sub problems and do divide and conquer basically binary search technique and find the answer. Let's revise it once again if it's not clear before writing the code. So say our bitonic array looks like this. It's like this and we are searching for this particular bitonic point. Now we take the middle element and we see at the middle element what is the condition. Okay, Here we see that the previous element is bigger and the next element is a smaller. So now we are sure that okay our bitonic point will be on the left side for sure. So what do we do? We don't have to consider this part at all. We make this as a new search space. Now in this again I will look for a middle point and now I know again here See, the previous element is more, the next element is smaller. So I know that, okay, I don't need to consider this again. I reduce my search space to this now. I take another middle point, say it is over here. Now I see that, okay, the previous element was smaller and the next element was bigger. So now my new space becomes this space. And here I find, I keep doing like this till I have one element and till I make sure that, okay, I have an element for which the previous element is smaller, the next element is also smaller and I have a peak over there. So that is the element that I have to return. So let's start writing the code now. If you are still not able to write code by yourself, I suggest you to pause, write, come back and see the video that, okay, are you able to write the exact code that I wrote? Are you able to handle all the edge cases properly or not? Otherwise, it's fine to watch the entire video and then go practice. See, I am myself telling you to pause the video, go and practice and then come back and also match that, okay, you handled everything the way I did. So we are given an array and the size of the array is n. So again, we take two variables, which is l equal to zero and h equal to n minus one. These are our two endpoints that we are going to deal with. And let's take a midpoint and let's write a while loop, y less than equal to h. And this is where we'll be finding the pythonic point and this is where we will be returning it. If we don't find it, we are going to return minus one. This should not happen because uh, in the end, the first or the last element somewhere will be a bitonic point. So we will actually never reach here, but there has to be a return value. So I have just written minus one for now. And let's write the while loop. So how do we find the middle point? It is going to be L plus h minus l by 2 and you know exactly what I'm going to say if you don't know why I'm writing like this and not l plus h by 2 then I wanted to go and reverse the second tutorial and if these points are not clear watch the entire series again these small details are extremely extremely important okay so we have the middle point and now what we are going to do we are going to check whether the middle point itself is the pythonic point is this the answer itself so what are we going to do if array of mid minus 1 is less than array of mid. So basically the previous element should be smaller and the next element should also be smaller. So array of mid plus one should also be less than array of mid. If this is the case, then we already have our answer. So let's check, uh, do we have to return the index or do we have to return like the array at index? So here it is saying we have to return the integer denoting the answer. So we have to return 
array at mid okay now so this is the case when we found our answer now let's say we have not found our answer in that case what will we do we know that we have to move our search space towards the left side or towards the right side so how are we going to do that we want to know whether we are on the increasing side or the decreasing side so for that we are going to do if array of mid minus one is less than array of mid then we know that okay we are on the increasing side right now so what are we going to do we are going to move towards the left side so we are going to move our edge to mid minus one say if this is not the case so this is the else part so otherwise we are going to move towards the right part now you know what i'm going to ask you to do i'm going to ask you to think of all the edge cases so what are the edge cases you have to think of when mid value is either zero or n minus one we will go out of bounds if we do min minus one. That is why we have to put check over here. So if min is equal to zero or this is the case. So we have done similar conditions in another question. Do you remember which question it was? Let me know in the comments and whether you notice the edge case or not. If you haven't noticed the edge case, it is time that we practice the questions again. If you are able to recognize the edge cases, now I'm really, really proud of you. You're doing great. Okay. If mid is equal to n minus one, and if you're not able to do, it's fine. Just re-practice all the questions. Just watch the videos again and you will be able to do this. Don't worry. If mid is equal to n minus 1 or if this is the case. Okay, so why have I written this? See, if mid is equal to 0, I don't need to check this condition. I won't go here. So I won't try to find mid minus 1 and I will never go out of bounds. Similarly, if my mid value is n, plus, n minus 1, I will not need to check this value and I will not go out of bounds by doing mid plus 1. So let's compile and see whether this works or not. Okay, so great. I made one mistake even though I was explaining and I did it wrong. I know I could have re-recorded the video, but I want to post this as it is and I want to ask you how many of you noticed this, that I've done this wrong, how many of you thought about it. Yeah, I did a mistake while writing the code. See, if array of mid minus one is less than array of mid, what does that actually mean? Let us see in the diagram. See, if array of mid minus one is less than array of mid, that means I am somewhere over here, right? So what code did I write? I wrote that I am going to move my edge on this side. So I'm, I was taking on the left side, which is wrong. My bitonics will be on the right side. And that is why I have to be looking on the right side. So I have, the, I have written the conditions wrong. So how many of you notice this? And see, diagrams always, always are very, very helpful. You can make mistakes like this. Everyone does. I did while recording the video. And that's fine. Like, I know the concept. You know the concept. We can do mistakes. So what am I going to do? I'm going to write L equal to mid plus one over here because we have to move towards right side and we have to move on the left side over here. Okay, let's compile this and see. Okay, does this work? Yes, let's submit it and see. Awesome, we have passed all the test cases, great. See, another way to write this would have been here, we have written when array of min minus one is less than array of min, that is we were checking this condition. We could have checked this condition also, which actually means if array of mid plus one is less than array of mid. So in that case, we are actually on the right side of the pythonic point. So in that case, we would have to do h equal to mid minus one and l equal to mid plus one. So this is just another way of writing. So I just want to show you that, okay, this is how you can, you know, change the conditions and write however you want. I hope you understood the question properly and I hope you were able to come up with all the edge cases you were able to identify my mistakes. Let me know in the comments how this is going and see you tomorrow. I hope you are being consistent. Let me know in the comments. You will get a chance to do a mock interview with me on the main channel if you are regularly consistent. Okay, so see you. Ta-ta.